Bravo, bravo. Did you dig it out? Slowly. This is what Michele Filosi and Argo love doing most. Stop. The two are hunting for truffles. The white truffle season is over. Now Argo is sniffing out its little brother called Bianchetto. You have to be careful not to damage white truffles, because it would cut the value of the precious fungi in half. Bianchetto truffles are much cheaper. A kilo costs around 300 euros. For a kilo of white truffles, you can get seven, even 10,000 euros. They're much rarer. Where is it? Find it, my love. Since he was a child, Michele has forged for truffles around his Umbrian hometown of Monteleone d'Orvieto. His dog, Argo, has been at his side for five years. A good truffle hunting dog makes for better business, but it also comes with unexpected dangers. All truffles are expensive, regardless of the type. There are some cruel people in the business who see truffle hunting as a war. They'll stop at nothing. They'll hide poisoned meatballs where your car is parked, laced with strychnine or snail poison. They'll poison your dog over money. So he stays undercover, which also stops Snoops from discovering his secret spots. He keeps them all jotted down in a notebook and on his cell phone. It's a treasure map that the 38-year-old wouldn't share with anyone. Michele sells some of the treasures he finds, but the professional chef prepares most of them at Cafe 7. He runs the little gourmet truffle restaurant along with his brother, Andrea. Did you find anything? Of course. Look at this bianchetto. Where'd you find it? Forget it. You might be my brother, but I'm not telling you. 100 kilometers away, they're unlocking truffles' big secrets at the headquarters of Urbani Tartufi's Truffle Empire. The company has cornered over 60% of the global truffle market. For years, scientists there have been trying to crack the genetic code of the precious fungi. They too guard their company secrets like a treasure. We're not allowed to film inside their labs. The results of their research are being put into practice at their startup, Truffle Land. When repotting the plants, we bring the roots into contact with truffle spores, in this case with the highly prized black truffle. We expose the plants to the spores, and a year after repotting, we have them checked. An independent office confirms whether the roots and the truffle spores have developed a symbiosis. If they have, we receive a certificate, and we can sell that batch. Truffle Land currently plants over 100,000 trees a year. Areas selected for cultivation are equipped with sensors, providing data on soil moisture and regulating water supply. Once they've grown, the black truffles just need a dog to come and sniff them out. That's what Candida and Sally do for a living. We collect from 11 in the morning until around 4 p.m., unless there's frost. Then we're not allowed to hunt for truffles, as it damages the soil. These cultivated truffles smell just as strong as the other ones. We call them our black diamonds. It takes around six years for an area planted like this to bear fruit, or rather, truffles. With this method, the world's largest truffle company can guarantee its supply. Demand is high, and climate change has led to increased scarcity, the head of the family business says. Farmers and landowners can also reap the benefits of truffle cultivation. Truffles yield the most profitable crops in the world. One hectare that's being used to grow truffles can bring in 100,000 euros each year. This black truffle weighs half a kilo and is valued at 600 euros. It'll soon be sold to customers in the U.S. We'll most likely sell this truffle to someone in New York. There it'll end up in a Michelin-class restaurant where it will be carried from table to table and grated onto the dishes. It's so beautiful. 
beautiful, delicious, expensive, and, despite our high-tech world, still being hunted by the same old symbiotic team, humans and dogs. <laughs>